Good day my friends, this is Bibo Herranero and welcome to this channel. Now, the reason why I'm creating this very very short video before we get into the intro and the actual product itself is because I would like to give you a warning that what you're about to see beyond the intro might overwhelm you a little bit because it, re it, it does not require a lot of tech um, experience but it might require you to do a little bit of research but i will try to make it as simple as i can so with those without much network experience out there can follow through so that's just it um i'll see you beyond the intro bye bye All right, so now we have the box here, and one of the main features is the traffic optimization. This is what, this is the main reason why I got this product. So let me just scissor it out and then open it for you guys. Alright guys, now that we've unboxed the item, let's go through how we can download its driver and also how we can update its firmware. Again, I believe you don't need the driver but you will need that if you want to configure the prioritizations of the ports. So right now we are in pp-link.com slash ph because I'm from the Philippines. Go over to support here and a drop down will show up. Click on download center. And then here is where you will be searching for the certain unit that you have. For this unit, we have the TL-SG108E. There we go. Click on that one. And here you'll be choosing the hardware version that you have. Now, I will be show Now, here's what it looks like, actually. So you know where to look for that version of your certain unit. Now, back to the website. Here you will be able to download the Easy Smart Configuration Utility and the Unmanaged Pro. I don't use the Unmanaged Pro. I don't know what it looks like, but what I'm using right now is the Easy Smart Configuration because of that word smart. Anyways, you're also going to want to download the firmware. Again, there's two parts you want to download here, the Easy Smart Configuration Utility. Click on that one. Install that one. Once you've done that, also download the firmware. Click on that one and unzip it all right so now let's talk about unzipping for those who don't really uh, um, know how to do that um, I'll put a timestamp down here below for you to continue on if you already know how to unzip so once you've downloaded the easy smart configuration and the firmware double click on that one and it will automatically open with WinRAR on my end so what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to click on this one and drag it over here and it will automatically unzip. There you go. So do the same for this other um, zip file which is the firmware. Click on both of them. You can, uh, what do you call this? I forgot what you call that but anyway click on both of them and then drag both here and they will auto unzip. Now these are the things you're going to want to keep. And these are the things you're going to be using moving forward. Okay, so now we'll be talking about installing the Easy Smart Configuration Utility. I already have it installed, so I don't know if this will cause some problems on my end. But um, hey, let's check it out. So once I open it, it's it's going it's going to prompt you to, um, in my case, modify, repair, remove. It will tell you if you want to um, install it. And just click on next, next, next. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I can't show it to you right now because I already have it installed. And then wait for it to completely install and close the setup um, you, wizard. Right, close the wizard. In this case, I'm going to cancel it. And then I'll see you in the next part of this video. Now, let me show you what it looks like once you've opened the Easy Smart Configuration Utility. Once I've opened that and you are connected via Ethernet to the unit, it's going to show up here, Discovered Switches. So once you open that one, you're going to log in as admin, and the password would also be admin. Okay, so now that we are logged in to our um, unit, 
the first thing you're gonna want to do is to back up to click on backup and restore and then back up your configuration because this is whatever setting it is on is the default setting and you're gonna want to keep the default setting later on if you need to reset it now all you're gonna have to do is simply click on that and create a name be you um, and then save that in any folder you wish to save it on after you've done that you can then upgrade its firmware so a while back I've shown you how what to download for its firmware but there are some things you're gonna have to do first and it's very very easy so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on my network open network and internet settings you will see that on your control panel so once I've opened that up I want to go to network okay ethernet so go to the ethernet tab i don't know if you're on windows 10 but i believe you will find the change adapter options somewhere there change adapter options click on that one now here you will see the adapters that you have you're going to want to click on the ethernet so click on properties okay that's again that's a right click and properties of our properties you're gonna want to go to internet protocol version 4 IP version 4 click on properties for that one and then use the following IP address for the IP address you're gonna want to click on 192 all right the subnet mask is okay the reason why it showed is because I clicked on tab so again that's 192 and then I clicked on tab which is why the 255.255.255.0 showed up Click on 168.0 and for the digit on this part it can be 2 to 255 so uh, just make it simple just put on 2 there and then click on OK once you've clicked on that one you've changed your IP address for this um, for your Ethernet you want to go well, you're gonna want to go back to your um, uh, what do you call this the software now go back to system info and I believe whatever you click here it would prompt you to log in again because you've changed your IP address. So once you've re-logged in, that's when you can click on firmware upgrade. Choose the file. Okay, so once you've chosen whichever file that is, that .bin file, as shown here, it's a .bin. Once you've opened that one, click on Upgrade Firmware and do not disconnect the Ethernet or do not power off the device. So wait for it to complete. Once it's completed, it will reset and you're going to have to log in again. So to make sure that your... So say you've already upgraded your firmware version and let's go back to the website. So here in the website, as you can see, the firmware version we downloaded is a version 5... is a 2019-1021. 2019-10-21. So if we go over to our software again, you'll see that we have here 2019-10-21. So the firmware upgrade is complete. Now you can change some settings here. Now I cannot educate you on what these actually mean, but one part here that would be very useful for you is the QoS tab. QoS mode, you can click on uh, I don't know what these two mean, but I click on port based and then click on apply. The reason why you're going to want it port based so that you can set the priority on each port. So to change it, you're going to want to click on the checkbox here and then click on the drop down menu for lowest, normal, medium, highest. Now say for example, I want port 3 to be, um, port 3 and 4 to be highest. So click on, I'll click on the two bring the drop down click on highest and click on apply and you're all good to go so once you set up the priority I would suggest but it's not required for you to back it up again back up your configuration as maybe uh, my setting something like that and then save it on your computer so I hope this cleared out some stuff so that you can start using your Ethernet switch and make full utilization of this product you just bought. Thank you very much.